Damon Runyon Theater. Once again, the Damon Runyon Theater brings you another story by the master storyteller, Damon Runyon. And this one, Blonde Mink. And to tell it to you, here is Broadway. Thanks. Well, one night I am sitting in Mindy's enjoying a late snack after a hard day of trying to make some bobs, when who sits down beside me but Julie the Starker. He looks at me for a minute, then says... Broadway, I see slats slaving today. You... You... You what? I see slats today. Julie, you are crazy. That is something you cannot do. Nevertheless, I do. Well, see you later. And with that, Julie gets up and walks away. He leaves me with a dill pickle stuck in my throat. Now, why his words should give me a cold chill and make me lose my appetite is something I will tell you about in a minute. Now, back to the Damon Runyon Theater and the famous story, Blonde Mink. Like I say, Julie gets up and walks away. But I catch my breath and start after him. I grab him just before he gets out the door. And the scene is as follows. There is something wrong, Broadway? I do not know yet. But, Julie, you are kidding me, huh? No. I tell you, I see Slats today. Julie, Slats is dead. I know, because I go to his funeral a week ago. Oh, sure. I know he is dead. But you see him today. Yeah. Look, today I go to the cemetery, maybe to put a few posies in his grave, you know? If there is nobody around, only me. I am there maybe five minutes and thinking what a, what a great pal Slats yeah, I know all that, Julie. He is a great guy, and we are all sorry he is no more. But that is neither here nor any place. What I want to know well, is... Well, like I say, I am there maybe five minutes when, when I hear him talk to me. Slats? Yeah, sure. Who else knows me in the cemetery? Go on. Talk some more. So he says hello, I say hello, and we talk. What about? Oh, about this and that, but mostly how cold he is. Truly. You are making me almost believe this. Why not? It is true. Well, I, I leave the cemetery, and I, I am not able to think of anything else but... Poor Slats. I can understand this. Broadway, I, I love that guy like he is my brother. He is the only citizen who ever gives me a break when I am down and out. Yeah, I know, but he... The time I get knocked out in a ring by the tiger, remember? I'm in the hospital. Well, sure, but... Slats pays all the bills and then lets me live in his big apartment. I love the guy. Julie... I am practically a stranger to him then, but he does it because he wants to help me. Broadway, I love that guy. You talk like he is still alive. Oh, no. He is dead. But he is very cold. Well, I, I gotta go now. I, I got a lot of thinking to do. With that, Julie leaves me again. And this time I stay put. Because it be a night and more than somewhat dark, I have no wish to listen to more of that talk. Naturally, I figured that Julie has some loose boards, and I feel sorry for him. Well, I do not see him for about a week. Then one night, I am getting ready to leave my hotel room when I hear... Come in. Hello, Broadway. Oh, Julie, come on in. If you are going out, I will not bother you. Sit down. I, uh, I wonder what becomes of you after that uh, talk we have in Mindy's. Oh, I am hearing about... Uh, mostly at the cemetery... Julie, look, you should not spend so much time there. It is coming on winter. Yeah, and... yeah, coming on winter. He's, he's cold, Broadway, awful cold. He tells me that all the time. I gotta do something for poor Slats. I just gotta. Julie, does anybody else see Slats? Oh, no. No, I go there alone. I see. Broadway, I gotta get some advice on what to do. About Slats? Yeah, and Beatrice. Beatrice? Oh, his girlfriend. Yeah, only she ain't a friend, Broadway. She ain't a friend. Maybe you better sit down and start talking. Yeah, I will. Now, go ahead. If it'll make you feel better, I will listen to you. Thanks. Slats will appreciate it, too. I would just as soon he thanks me through you. I will tell him. Thanks. Well, 
Well, it, it is hard to know where to start, but I, I think I will go back to the day that he first introduces me to Beatrice. I, I'm not in the apartment when he brings her there, but I get there a very short while after they do, and I'm about to open the door when I hear a doll laugh. <laughs> <laughs> Go on, laugh some more, B. I like to hear it. Why? I don't know, maybe because I... Hiya, Slats. Oh. Uh, oh, didn't know you got company. Come on in, Julie, come on. I, I ain't gonna stay only a minute. I was waiting I... for you. Uh, Julie, meet B. B, this is Julie. I told you about him. Oh, yeah. The, the ex-prize fighter. Hiya. Fine, and you? Oh, making out. Just making out. Slats, I gotta go now. I got a rehearsal in an hour. Oh, sure. What about after the show tonight? What about it? Supper, dancing. All right. The two of us. Huh? Sure. The two of us. Good. I'll get a cab for you. No, I can do it. See you after the show. Nice to meet you, Julie. Yeah. You're here, too. Be back in a second, Julie. Yeah. <laughs> Some doll, huh, Julie? Oh, yeah, look her. Quite a good-looking Judy. You like her? Sure. <laughs> You're a liar. Yeah. Maybe this one's different, Julie. Yeah, could be. Sooner or later, you gotta hit a winner. I got a hunch this is it. Sure. Oh, by the way, you, you win ten grand on the day. Huh? I can pick him, huh? You're awful good at picking horses. Just horses, huh? <laughs> so? <laughs> no, I'm used to it. <laughs> sure. Okay, let's get to work and handicap a few GGs for tomorrow. Well, that is the way it starts, Broadway. You, you know something about it? Not much. All I know is that this bee is a very fancy doll. And very expensive. Yeah, yes, she is. And I guess you remember that Slats and B make it a very close twosome. Sure. Yeah, it goes on for maybe six, eight months. He's a good guy, Broadway. There ain't anything he does not do for her. I remember. In fact, there are several dolls around the stem here who give their ever-loving husbands a bad time when they point out how good Slats is to be. Yeah, but he is good to everybody. What about the rest of the story? Oh, sure. Yeah, I almost forgot. Let's see, uh... I'm telling you that I meet B that night, and for six, eight months, there is nothing too good for her or too expensive. Well, it's one night, maybe about two, three in the morning. I'm in my room when I hear B and Slats come in. You see, they often come to the apartment after the show she is in, and I make scrambled eggs and bacon for them. But this night, well, I'm in bed with a cold. They come in, and... I don't, I don't want to listen, but I can't help it. Oh, now, be reasonable, honey. I told you why I can't do it. Sure, sure, you told me why, sure. <laughs> Come on, laugh for me. What at? Is there anything funny? <laughs> Man. Let me alone. Ah, oh, B. Ah, B, B. <laughs> You're even prettier when you're sore. <sighs> Slats. Slats, honey, please. Please get it for me. Uh I can't be. I really can't. Please, pretty, please. It's the one thing I really want, real bad. Well, you got five fur coats already. What's the difference if you don't get one more? But this is different. It's a blonde mink. Blonde, brunette, redhead. What's the difference? It's the only one I've seen like it. Oh, would the eyes pop out if I walked in with that coat on some night? Uh, Think of it, Slats. You and me walking into a nightclub. Uh, you'll have to wait to take that walk, honey. Why? You told me how much the coat costs. Only 23000 That's every cent I got. Oh, low B. I haven't been hitting him too well for the last couple of weeks. Oh, but you will. Sure, sure. But until I get back in the win, I've got obligations. Obligations? Yeah. The twenty-three grand I got will see me through. Just. Obligations. You said obligations. That's right. Like what? Hmm. Different things. Sure. Obligations. Like that punch-drunk tramp you got living here, sopping up your money. Huh? And every wobbly on Broadway knows he can hit you for a touch any time. Me, for the love of mine. Sure, go to Slats. He'll give you a hundred or a thousand. He won't even put it on the books. I can't even ask you for a measly fur coat. Measly? Yeah. If you had back half, even a third of the money you throw away on panhandlers and down and outers, I could have that coat. You don't understand, B. You're so right. I don't understand. Uh, 
And I ain't gonna try until you got better reasons uh, for putting me back of a lot of has-beens and hunch front fighters. B, wait a minute. B for the lover. <coughs> B. B. Julie. Julie, you're here. Julie, help me. Slatch, what's the matter? I don't know. I got, I got an awful funny feeling in my chest. Your face is all white. What? I got it. I gotta sit down. Yeah, yeah, you sure sit. Never had anything like this before. I... Gee, I better call a doc, huh? No, no, no. I'll be all right. I didn't know you were here. I, I, I was sleeping. You, you woke me up when you yelled for me. Sleeping? Yeah, I do not hear you come in, Slats. <laughs> You're a liar. Yeah. B don't mean anything, Julie. She's a good kid, only spoiled. Hey, sure, that's all. Spoiled rotten. Yeah, I... Julie, I never had nothing like this before. Julie, I... I'm scared. Scared stiff. That is the story that Julie tells me, up to that point. But it is not the end. Not by far. And what happens after, I will tell you about in a minute. And now, back to the Damon Runyon Theater and the famous story... Blonde Mink. Like I say, Julie is telling me about Slats and B. I listen to him go on with the story as follows. I get Doc Brennan over real fast. Doc looks at Slats, then he he takes me aside and tells me that that Slats is about ready for the long ride. I do not believe it. I understand why you do not. There is never anything wrong with Slats. Well, Doc Brennan says it is sudden excitement. Besides, I remember that Slats does a lot of worrying for a couple of weeks. Anyhow, the doc tells me, and when he goes, Slats calls me over to him, and he tells me to get Beatrice there real fast. I call her. She comes in maybe half hour later. She goes into him, but I stand right there outside the door. Oh? Uh-huh. I do not do it to listen, but I figure if she gets him excited again, I will kill her. Yeah. Yeah, I see. Well, what happens then? Like I say, I... Stand outside the door, and I hear what goes on, and it is like this. I came as soon as I get away, Slats. What... what happened? <laughs> the ticker took a nosedive. Won't come back up. You... you, you ain't gonna... Yeah. <laughs> uh, you're crying. Slats. Slats, don't. Please don't. This is something I can't get for you, honey. <laughs> This is something I can't fix. What'll I do, Slats? What'll I do? I'm going to tell you that. Now, listen to me. Get everything I say. All right. There's an envelope under my pillow. Get it out. Raise your head. Yeah. You got it? This? Uh Uh-huh. There's 23 grand in there. Slats? Give... Give Julie two grand. Julie? Give him... Do it. Then... Go to Berry Brothers over in Brooklyn. Who are they? B. They got a stone made for me. A big fancy one. Only thing I ever bought for myself. I gotta be in style when they come out to... Dad, stop talking like that. Keep the rest of the dough for yourself. It'll come to about 19 grand. 19,000? But... It's a pretty fancy stone. Cost two grand. Didn't want to pay for it before because I figured that would be cooks and what's here. That's all, baby. You better go now. Slats. Slats, please. Get out of here, big. Get out fast. Please. I said get out of here now. Yeah. Yeah, Slats. Hurry it up, B, and don't look around. Julie. Julie, you'd better go in there. Yeah, I am. You going? Yeah, I'm going. He, he tell you anything? 
No, nothing. Uh Uh-huh. What are you staring at, you tramp? Nothing. Just absolutely nothing. And go on in there. Go on in. And stop staring at me. So long. Slats. 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 That is the way he dies, Broadway. Yeah, yeah, I see. But uh, about the dough he gives B, what do you do about it? I go to see B one day, right after Slats's, well, the day after the funeral. I go to her place. It is a pretty ritzy apartment. At first, she does not want to see me, but I bust in anyway. All right, you're in. Now, what do you want? I've got a rehearsal in 20 minutes. I will not take up too much time, B. <laughs> I know you won't. Go on, make it fast, will you? Sure, I want to know what about the dough. Dough? What dough? 23 grand. <laughs> You're on a long, big dream, Julie. <laughs> uh-uh. I hear slats give it to you. So you can hear through those cauliflowers. All I want is to know what about the dough. <laughs> there ain't any. You are lying. If you're not out of here in 10 seconds, I'll have you tossed out. I hear slats tell you to pay for his marker. You're crazy. You took so many punches, you don't I know... can also still give him. You wouldn't try it. No. No, I guess I would. Slats would not like it. I would never do anything Slats does not like. Get out of here. I am telling you, I do not care for the two grand he gives you for me. (laughs) I do not care for it. All I want is for you to buy that marker for Slats. He is expecting it. You talk like he's alive. I see him. You... (laughs) You... (laughs) It is not funny. (laughs) Did you tell anybody else you saw Slats? (laughs) Yeah. Why? (laughs) Did you tell anybody else about about the money? (laughs) No. Why? Tell everybody. See if they'll listen to you. Tell them you saw Slats and about the money. You think they'll believe you? I am warning you, B. If you do not get that marker for Slats, I'll do something about it. But first, I will ask Slats. That is what happens when I go to see her. Julie, you are sure that Slats gives her the money? You, you do not believe me? Well, I see. Maybe she is right about people thinking I am crazy. No, no, I do not think that. Only... Only what? Nothing. Just... nothing. Uh Uh-huh. Well, well, I will go now because I promised Slats I will see him again tonight. So long, Broadway. Uh, So long, Julie. Uh, Do you wish me to say hello to him for you? Oh, please do. He always likes you. Maybe he will come to see you. I am thinking of moving from here. Oh? Well, well, you will give me your new address and I will tell him. So long. Well, I do not see Julie for maybe another week. I almost forget about the whole thing. Until one night I am sitting in Mindy's when I am joined by Johnny Brannigan, who is a plainclothes copper. And the scene is as follows. Hello, Broadway. Oh, how are you, Johnny? Pretty good. Mind if I sit down? Well. <laughs> I know. It wouldn't look good for you to be seen with a cop. No, it is not that. It is that. But I'll sit down. You uh, have something on your mind? Uh-huh. What are you eating? Blinters. Uh, too rich for me late at night. Is this to be a discussion of foods? Not altogether, Broadway. You know a girl named Beatrice Jordan? I know of her. Slat Slavin's girl, wasn't she? I believe they have an understanding. Mm-hmm. What else do you know about it? Nothing. Nothing at all, Johnny. I see. You, uh, like sour cream on blintzes? And jelly. Sure. Well, it seems as Beatrice is running around lately with a young fella from Colorado. Mm, she gets around. Mm-hmm. And it seems his family carries more weight than Pike's Peak. So I get a call from Colorado to keep an eye on the boy and Beatrice. I never have anything to do with her. I know nothing about her, except that she is one Slats' girlfriend. Okay. I thought maybe because you get around a lot, you could tell whether she's on the level or not. I gotta turn in a report, you know. Oh, sure. Those blintzes sure look good. Oh, they are. Uh, uh, Johnny. Yeah? 
I cannot tell you if B is on the level with this citizen from Colorado. Oh? So? But I do know that her idea of a level is more than somewhat uneven. Uh-huh. Well, thanks, Broadway. That is all right, Johnny. Drop around the house some night, Broadway. My wife makes wonderful blintzes. Now, all this talk makes me more than somewhat curious. However, it is none of my business, except for Julie. But I do not see him for some time. In fact, it is two days later before I even hear anything. Then it is Johnny Brannigan who comes to see me in my hotel room. And the scene is as follows. Broadway, two days ago, I asked you for a line on Beatrice Jordan. I remember. I had the feeling then that you could tell me a few things about her that you were holding back. I am not a stoolie, Johnny. Anyhow, I tell you all I know, which adds up to zero. Sure. Broadway, I have worries. Lots of them. Eh? What brings him on? Where's Julie? Julie? I do not see him for two days. Uh Uh-huh. Broadway, I gotta find him and ask him a few questions. I do not think he will talk, Johnny. I gotta ask him anyway. Know where he is? What if I tell you? I told you. Just a few questions. That all? What else? Hmm. You, uh, look for him where he lives? Uh Uh-huh. Landlady said he didn't come home at all last night. Oh. Now, I know he comes here to see you. So I figured you might know where he is now. At the cemetery. What? He goes there to see Slats. What? That's what he tells me. I see. Well, how'd you like to go along with me? What for? Maybe he'd rather talk to you than to a cop. About what, Johnny? About B. She was killed last night. I stare at Johnny. He just looks back at me. There is a big hole that is once my stomach. And I feel like a first-class heel to tell him where Julie might be. But I can do nothing. Johnny is very gentle when he insists I go with him, so I do. And what happens when we get to the cemetery? I will not forget if I live long enough to see Harry the horse shake hands with the police commissioner. And I will tell you about it in a minute. the cemetery, and it is coming on a very dark night, and it is cold with snow on the ground. I do not mind telling you that I have a hard time keeping my hair from pushing my hat off of my head. Then I hear Johnny talking to me. We're near the place now, Broadway? Yeah, 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 just ahead. But look, Johnny... It's all right, Broadway. I won't hurt him. I just want to ask him some questions. If he's like you say, he'll be all right. I hope so. I hope so. Shh. Look. That is Julie. Who's he talking to? Slats. Cut it out. Who is that? Answer him, Broadway. Me? Go on. Who is that? Julie, it it is Broadway. Oh, oh, swell. If Slats is here, Broadway, he will be glad to see you. Julie, it is very cold out here. Maybe you better come back to town with me. Oh, come on and say hello to Slats. Then I will go with you. Go ahead. Okay, Julie. There is somebody with you. Huh? I I see somebody's shadow. That's right, Julie. It's me, Johnny Brannigan. Johnny. A cop. A cop, Ron. Will you bring a cop? It's all right, Julie. We're coming over to talk with you. Please do not do that, Johnny. Broadway, ask him. Please not. Johnny, do not go over there. I've got to. I want to talk to Slats, too, Julie. Please do not come closer, Johnny. I know what you are here for. Just ask a few questions. No, no. Julie, please take it easy. Everything is all right. Stay away. Julie, drop that gun. Drop it. No, I do what is right. I do what Slats tells me to. Julie, drop that gun. Broadway, drop that gun. I will hit you the next time, Johnny. Julie, please. I'll forget you fired at me if you'll only drop that gun. No. Johnny, you hit? Arm. Julie, even now, I won't say anything about the gun, please. Julie, everything is all right. I know. I make it all right. But I'm not going with you. Johnny. 
What happens? I, I... I think I winged him. Come on. Johnny, you shoot awful good. This is one time I didn't mean to. He uh, moved fast to one side. Sure. I know, Johnny. I better put in a call and find out. Broadway. Look. Huh? At what? What's that? Spread over Slat's grave. It looks like something to keep Slat's warm. I think they call it blonde mink. And so ends the famous Damon Runyon story, Blonde Mink. Listen in again next week for... The Damon Runyon Theater. The Damon Runyon Theater with John Brown as Broadway is directed by Richard Sandville and the story is adapted for radio by Russell Hughes. Vern Carstensen is in charge of production. This is a Mayfair production. (laughs) ¶¶